Okay, so now we've gone over a bit of the interface, let's talk about one of the key features in any text editor, which is of course extensions. Now extensions are a great thing because they not only allow you to expand how the application looks, but they also expand how the application functions and handles certain types of files. So one of the cool things I like about VS Code is it makes extensions sort of right first class here. We have them right in our left hand column. We can click this and we have a little indicator to letting us know that I have five extensions that are in need of updating. But before we get into that, let's actually make this quite a bit bigger so we can see this. And what's cool about this is that we can search extensions in the, mar in the marketplace Place. Let's say we want to look for some React Native stuff. It's going to search for React Native and it tells us which ones uh, are most popular. So by default, you can see that these ones at the top are very most popular. This one has 235,000 installs. So as you can see here, 4.5 stars, code hinting, debugging, integrated commands. This seems like a great, great thing to have. So to install an extension, we simply have to click install. Now, one of my least favorite things about VS Code and how it ex handles extensions is that after installing an extension, you need to reload the entire app. Now, I understand why this works this way. I get it. Uh, but what I'd prefer is that after you hit reload, that things sort of went back to where they were. But check this out. If I hit reload, click reload window, it doesn't remember even what I was searching for. It doesn't remember where I was. So that way, if you're searching for a whole bunch of stuff, it's going to be in your best interest to install a whole bunch before reloading. Otherwise, you're going to have to come back in and search for React Native once more if we wanted to install more React Native extensions. So just a minor gripe. But what's cool is that after we have this one installed, we have a little gear next to it. We can click this gear and here we can disable it for this particular workplace. We can disable it for always or uninstall it. We can click on the title and see the page with all the details. This should be similar to what you're used to with an Atom, but much better than what you're used to in Sublime Text. So we can see not only do we have the contributions, we have change log where we can see what changed from version to version. We can even see its dependencies, what other extensions it's depending on. But as you can see here, React Native Tools, this readme is going to tell you everything you need to know, what exists, it's, keep scrolling down here. It's going to just basically tell you how you can make this package better for yourself and improve your workflow. Now, there are a ton, a ton, a ton of different extensions. In addition to these extensions are also things like themes and color schemes. If we were to hit these three dots, we could have access to a whole bunch of stuff like show installed extensions, show outdated extensions, show disabled, recommended, workspace recommendation, recommendation key maps and popular. If we were to click show popular extensions, it's simply going to give us the ones that are downloaded the most. And it, you can see 2.1 million for the C sharp. We have uh, Python, we have VS Code icons, which is one I definitely recommend grabbing, or at least some of these icons. Is having icons next to your files is something that is makes any sort of text editing experience really nice. Something I always liked about Atom and Atom's extensions. We also have this really cool debugger for Chrome, which we're going to get into later. We have ESLint, uh, which if you're not using ESLint for linting your JavaScript, highly recommend it. But as you can see here, these are all of the most installed extensions. Now, this isn't my personal version of VS Code here. This is in my actual laptop, I have a ton of these extensions installed. And you can really go nuts because honestly, they're not really that large. Uh, they're not going to sync your hard drive or something by installing a whole bunch of these. But as you can see here, we have things like Atom One Dark Theme based on the One Dark Theme from Atom. So we can come in here and check out a whole bunch of different ones. And you'll, you'll find pretty much anything you're looking for in here. You want it, it's here. So now I actually want to update all of my extensions at once. I can get, if you have nothing in the search bar here, it's going to just show you your installed ones. You could click this update button on all of these, or we could click these three dots 
and then say either check for updates or update all extensions. If we click update all, it's going to download and install. Now, if I were to hit this reload button before they had all finished installing, uh, it would cancel the installation of whichever ones hadn't finished. So you want to make sure till you see a bunch of blue. And once you see all blue, then we can go ahead and click a reload. Any reload will do and all of them should be updated. Okay, let's click reload, reload window. And gone is that little annoying thing. And you can click close here, but basically we have everything installed now and all of our extensions are up to date for whichever ones you've had. So managing installing extensions is super nice and easy. And obviously if you hate the extension that's being used, let's say this tenacious design one, which I do love, I can click here and uninstall it. Cool. So these are extensions using VS code. You can see how easy it is to manage your extensions just like that. And while the reloading thing is a tiny bit of a bummer, it's not a big enough bummer that I'm going to stop using this application or anything because of that. Cool. So I hope this made understanding extensions just a little bit easier. In the next few videos, we're going to be going over things like customizing, modifying this. We're going to be using some different maybe key bindings to update the key bindings. I'm going to be showing you a lot of these Git features because if you use Git, and uh, I know most of you probably do, the Git features on this thing are top notch. And out of the box, they're much better than anything else the other text editors on the market bring. So keep watching as we dive further and further into VS Code, which is a nice, simple text editor with lots and lots of great features and runs really fast. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. If you want to help support these videos, head over to store.leveluptutorials.com and check out all of the paid series we have available for you there. Or there's also a pro subscription where you get access to these videos for download. You get access to a ton of series that aren't available on YouTube. A lot of great, great stuff and more content coming all the time. There will be a React Native series coming. In fact, this code that you see right here is from the React Native series that I'm recording right now. So keep your eyes open for that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.